Hey everyone, welcome back to Mind Keys. Super good to see you all, and I'm super stoked to be back in the conversation with you guys, offering you more value. So in today's video, I wanted to start to empower you with a more clear understanding of some of the fundamentals, some of the basics of the path of self-healing. So uh, if you uh, have been following my channel, wanting to learn more, really getting a grasp on how to self-heal with psychedelics, or just in general, you're wanting to know more about what the underlying structure of self-healing and personal growth and personal transformation, actual lasting change for ourselves is, this is the video for you. We're gonna unpack that a bit. I'm gonna to start to explain exactly what it is that you need to start cultivating for yourself that is absolutely essential to any form of personal growth or personal change. So let's get into it. So in the work that I study and in the work that I do with my clients, there is a very powerful piece of neuroscience that my teachers refer back to and utilize all the time, which really essentially is understood to be the structure, the underlying structure of any effective, successful change. So if we are talking, whether we are talking, um, you know, just skill development, whether we're talking psychological healing, emotional healing, whether we're talking about spiritual healing, whether we're talking about personal development, what, whatever, it doesn't matter what area of your life, there is a common pattern to all personal transformation, to all personal change. And this pattern is something that I teach all my clients as part of what I do with them because I want to empower you to know how to change yourself for the rest of your life. So this is something that is uh, grounded in neuroscience. This is something that is a universal cross-culturally, cross-time. This is a pattern you'll see in spiritual literature, in philosophical literature, in old uh, psychological literature, in current psychological literature. There's a common pattern there. And so uh, this is really what I use at the heart of all the interventions and all the different ways that I can approach working with myself or working with my clients. So uh, I wanna to start to introduce you to these ideas today. So basically, inside of this pattern, there's four steps in the pattern, but inside this pattern, there are kind of two larger phases. There, there are two things that we need to have or need to do to feed into our nervous systems in order to unlock the ability to change. And when you understand these and when you understand how to do them properly, uh, your whole approach to growth shifts because you now know what the key is. You now know exactly what you need to do in order to transform, in order to let the problem go, in order to move past the issue. And the thing is, until we understand that sequence of events, pretty much it's locked in there. It's generally very kind of like securely wired in. And that's a good thing. I know we struggle with that for any of us that are suffering and dealing with stuff. We struggle with that. We don't want uh, our issues to be locked into place in our brain, but it's literally a survival mechanism, an evolutionarily designed survival mechanism that is good because if we didn't have it, we'd be like lemmings you know, running off the cliff. We wouldn't learn from our own mistakes. We wouldn't learn from others' mistakes. And generally speaking, we probably wouldn't have survived as long as we have, given that we are basically slow, we have no claws, we have no giant teeth, we aren't that strong compared to all the other animals on the earth. So it is our ability to recognize patterns and our ability to use that pattern recognition uh, that gets locked in our brain that helps us to survive. And this is also, of course, exactly what keeps us in suffering. So let me explain what these two qualities are that you need that starts to unlock that and create that ability to change for yourself uh, so that you can start to look at your path a bit differently. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get into it here. So the first thing you're gonna need in order to start to transform, in order to unlock yourself and create that change that you wanna create, is you're going to need some sort of skill set, some sort of a tool to clear the issue, interrupt the pattern of the problem, however you want to think about it, some way of stopping the problem. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter what tool you use, whether that's meditation, whether that is dance or yoga, whether that is some form of therapeutic intervention, whether that is some sort of energy work, whether that is shamanism, or um, yeah, the, the list is very, very long in terms of what you can use to interrupt the pattern or 
clear the issue. But first thing you need is a tool of some sort. Now, one of the things that I'm very fond of teaching, uh, you know, that I created my first course around and that I teach all my clients about are different tools to interrupt whatever the problem is, whether it's depression, anxiety, a trigger, overwhelm, stress, um, you know, a self-defeating belief, whatever the problem is, we have to know how to stop it, how to interrupt it, how to put the brakes on it long enough to have a pause, to have a space, right? So you can do this all kinds of different ways. But step number one is you need to be able to stop it and interrupt it and clear it. And, you know, in my personal belief system, the way I view this work now, you want to have more than one tool or more than two tools. You want to have a full utility belt, pardon the metaphor, or, you know, a whole grab bag of different tools that you can pull from that work for you, that you like, that you connect with, that makes sense to you, that you will use when you need it in order to interrupt, to stop the pattern, to clear the issue, even if just temporarily, long enough to create a little pause, a little break in the stressed out, overwhelmed, triggered, anxious, depressed, whatever state it is that you're wanting to let go of. So that's step number one. And then the second thing you're going to need is some connection to a resource. So what do I mean by resource? This can sound like a really abstract concept. What do you mean? Do you mean money? Do you mean, you know, time? Do you mean, you know, material things? What do you mean? Well, I kind of mean all those things and more. Let me explain. So you need some connection to something that strengthens, empowers, or in some way kind of builds you up, right? So this is typically going to be resource states like positive emotions, positive mindsets, positive memories or, or, or times or, or modes of being that you've been in that felt good, that were healing, that were empowering, that were encouraging, that were comforting, these kinds of states. Or it's going to be something like, um, you know, it could be a skill set you have, right? Or, you know, a resource could be sometimes external, although I think that's less often the case. Usually what we're seeking is some sense of a resource state, a resource feeling, a resource mindset, a resource experience that we can draw from and, and tap into and remember how good we can feel or how strong we really are or how beautiful life really is or whatever it is. But you can also look at resources in terms of just, you know, for wholeness and completeness sake and what I'm sharing here, you can look at resources also in terms of uh, skills, in terms of networks of people that you know or relationships you have, in terms of um uh, talents in terms of, uh, you know, sure, even material things you have, money or, you know, f you know, physical things that you have that you can use that will help you. But generally speaking, when we're talking about self-healing here, we're talking about clearing the problem, like I said, and then also having some sort of a resource state. Now, this is something I want to start to get you thinking about because a lot of people, when they come to me for coaching or, you know, when they come to a therapist or when they, you know, go to an ayahuasca circle and they are, you know, really struggling, really suffering, really going through it, having a hard time. One of the things that's part of the recipe of, of where they're at in that moment is that they, they feel like they don't have any connection to any resources internally. So when we have problems that are overwhelming us, we're either forgetting the resources we already have, we are not accessing them, or we don't have the resource that, you know, yet that might help us in that situation. So I want you to start thinking about in general in your life, you know, instead of thinking about the story of the problem and the what went wrong at this age and this kind of thing happened and now I'm dwelling on this and that and the thought looping and the ruminating on the details. This is where most people get stuck. I want you to start seeing the big picture of yourself the big picture, like zoom out, you know, if you could step outside of yourself and look at your life, look at it and go, how do I interrupt the problem? And what are the resources that I need or that I've had or that I have that I could help me if I could access them more to overcome or change or heal or transform? 
These are the two phases of this four-step process that I was just explaining to you. So the first phase is clearing the problem. The second phase is developing the resources. But beyond a moment of change, beyond a moment of working with a coach or being in psychedelic therapy or something, in general, if you start thinking in terms of resourceful states, resourceful mindsets, resourceful emotions, resourceful memories, which by the way, if you've ever had a good psychedelic experience, you know, you had a moment of being filled with the love of the universe, or you, you had a moment of feeling complete peace in yourself, or a moment of feeling total positivity for the first time in a long time, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure you get my point. If you've ever had an experience like that in psychedelics, and most people do, then that's a resource state. Right, So I want you to start thinking in terms of cultivating resourcefulness, right? cultivating positive mindsets, positive emotions, positive experiences, positive memories, things you can call upon in order to feel stronger, better, healthier, happier, more inspired. And the thing is, for most people, we have a bunch of them that we've just forgotten, that we were just filtering out, right? Whether it is uh, memories from childhood that are, were good, even if we had a crappy childhood, whether it is um, some other area of life that we don't realize we have a strong, resourceful state from. Like, for example, maybe you're a gamer and you're a badass when you're gaming, but the rest of your life you tend to feel overwhelmed and you know things are too much. Maybe you need some of that badass energy from your gamer self in the rest of your life, right? Or et cetera, et cetera. There, we often have some part of our lives where we have the resources that we need in our problem area. So I want you to start thinking again of techniques and ways that you can clear the issue. I have my own that I use and that I teach my clients, but it could be anything. You know, talk therapy works, all kinds of forms of therapy work, CBT works, uh, EFT works, you name it, that's up to you. But find some way to clear the issue that works for you and then start thinking about what are the positive mindsets, the positive experiences, the positive memories, the positive aspects of yourself that you can call upon to heal yourself and move forward in your life. These are essential to change. I hope this, I hope this is making sense. I hope this hits home for you. Now, like I was just saying earlier, one of the cool things about starting to approach your own healing, your own personal transformation path in this way is A, it's backed in science, but B, it doesn't matter what form of these things you like. That's what's so cool. C, uh, you don't have to be using psychedelics to run this pattern on yourself, to use this pattern to change your life. In fact, with my clients, I encourage them to run themselves through these, this pattern as I explain it more detail throughout their day to day, not just when they're psychedelic, right? But uh, every day, right? So this is something you can use all the time in your life. This pattern that I'm starting to introduce you to here is the secret sauce to, again, all forms of change. So it doesn't matter if you're super spiritual and you're super kind of out there and you like these esoteric ideas, uh, you know, or you're really into ayahuasca shamanism and you want to go that route with it, or you're really into like Buddhism and Zogchen and you're a hardcore meditator, you want to go that route with it, or whether you're, you know, a hardcore kind of rational scientific kind of person, you want to go that route with it, it doesn't matter. Or, you know, you're Jungian or all these different types. It doesn't matter. That's what's so cool about this is that this pattern applies and can be used in any of those approaches and traditions, right? That's what I like about this. Plus, again, you can do this while you're sober. And also, um, once, once you start to see yourself this way, change just becomes possible. You know, this gives you the leverage into lasting healing and change and it has nothing to do with um with you know with any particular weird esoteric tradition which i really like about it so anyways i just want to kind of put that out there for you just to remind you to summarize that the two things that you need in order absolutely in order to get the healing get the change that you're after is you're going to need some way to interrupt the problem interrupt the pattern stop the issue, and then you're going to need some way to access a resource state, a resource thought, memory, emotion, mindset, you name it. That's up to you, but you're going to need both of those in a healthy measure. So 
That's what I got for you today. I hope this clarifies a bit of the fundamentals of the path here. Again, I'm aiming to empower you. I'm aiming to teach you how, you know, teaching a person how to fish, right? I'm aiming to give you the fundamentals here of change. And to be brutally frank and honest with you, there are a lot of therapists that don't know this out there, even though this is uh, neuroscience based, you know, stuff that therapists should be reading and learning about. This is something that a lot of people do stumble upon and, and hit gold with on occasion in their sessions as healers, but they don't know explicitly. So I'm starting to art articulate something to you. Excuse me, getting excited. I'm articulating something to you that not a lot of people know and is the fundamental of change. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy this video. If you got something out of this, you got an aha moment or uh, just, you know, this kind of like was a piece of the answer for you, please do me a favor, uh, click the thumbs up, click the like, comment down below, engage, let's connect. I hope you're doing well and we'll talk soon.